Welcome to another episode of a Trailer Sailor Adventures. In this episode, as promised, I'm going to show you how to bend steel tubing. It was so much fun. Alright, so today I'm going to start on my stern rail. And uh, it's so much fun. I actually got all this used. Uh, from a guy, it was 40 feet worth for 25 bucks. And uh, the worst part is, I've had to pull all of these off to make one straight line. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this little corner off, and then uh, we'll start bending and see how it goes. One of the most difficult things was getting these little connectors off. Uh, even if I used a penetrant and heat the allen key uh, fitting in there would just break so i resorted to pounding them off and it looks just as hard as it actually was next was the totally osha compliant sawing of the tubing So next, I had to create something to bend the pipe, and uh, that's what this is. The pipe goes on this long piece of plywood, and in between these two 2x4s, which if you can see on the inside, I beveled out, and it's nice and rounded. So the thing you got to remember with this is uh, when you bend the steel, it tends to kink, and so what we did is we packed the entire thing with sand, and it took a while uh, to pack it up, and then you cork both sides. All right, the last little piece of advice before you start bending away is to heat the metal. So I used a coal chimney, and uh, I filled it all the way to the top. I got it blazing hot, and then I took my piece of metal, and I set it over the top for about five minutes. Uh, it was hot enough after a few minutes to uh, immediately boil away water. And uh, don't forget, you want to use some really thick gloves and don't touch, you know, within two or three feet of the hot part. So with the hot metal and uh, some really thick gloves, transfer the tubing over to your pipe bender and uh, then have somebody stand on top of the pipe bender um, preferably where the pipe is so that the 2x4s don't come out. Um, I had to put some stakes down so that the entire thing wouldn't move and gently bend away. Uh, if you do it properly, you'll come out with little to no kinking whatsoever. All right, this is a finished product. Um, well, almost finished, but you can see there's just a, a tiny bit of a kink in that side. And then in this side, there's a, a little bit more of a kink. And you can see some discoloration, which I'm going to try and buff out. Um, but overall, it turned out pretty good. Uh, it's only four foot, uh, three inches from side to side. And so our 10 foot piece worked out pretty well. So after all the bending's done, you're going to need some fittings. And uh, that's where these guys come in. I bought these on Amazon. I think they were about $15, maybe $12 a piece. Um, they have different sizes. This one is seven eighths. And as you can see, I just measured it. I put some butyl tape around the bottom. And then uh, I put locking bolts underneath so that they're not going to be going anywhere. And uh, I got four of them. And then you can see on the other side over there, there's two more. And then obviously I needed something to attach the top. So that's where I got these guys. Um, same thing, about 12 to $15 on Amazon. And uh, as you can see, I kept mine about 30 inches high. Um, I think stock or the ones you can buy come about 22 inches. Um, but this is the finished product. I also got the end caps, which you can see. Uh, those were like seven or eight dollars each, and they uh, they're essential to make sure that you don't you know scratch anything up and nothing gets down in there. Um, but the finished product. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. On these, I did the same thing. I had to bend these uh, just a little bit. You can see not much, and I because uh, they have to go in at about um, well, they have to be at a 90 degree angle to get in there, right? 
and then uh, up at the top, I just use the already existing ones, which are uh, a little bit of a different angle, but it gives it kind of a, a nice look. There's a lot of workable area on that side, and then uh, this side I kept a little shorter. I think on that side I'm probably going to end up putting a barbecue in sometime soon. In terms of wiring, this boat is uh, pretty much a mess. Um, I started in the back because uh, in the back the battery and the fuel tank were both in the lazarette. And so I'll show you really quick what I did um, just here in the back in the lazarette. Um, the battery was right there. Uh, you can still see the old cables. And then the cables came up to this attachment and then over to this attachment and then the motor hooked up out here. So what I did is I bought this um, four gauge wire and uh, I ran it, um, ran off some bolts here. Uh, the bolts here will attach to the motor through this little hole that I put in. And um, I left uh, some extra room so I can put a breaker in there eventually. But as you can see, this runs uh, down into the inside of the boat that way. And uh, now inside on the starboard side is where my battery is. So when I purchased the boat, uh, the battery was just a motorcycle battery. It was, it was pretty small, kind of pathetic. Uh, it did its purpose, but um, now I'm in the midst of uh, fixing up the wiring. So this is a wiring that comes in that I just showed you. And it comes down into there. It comes down through here, and as you can see, here's my new battery. Um, I put bus bars, a positive and a negative back there. Okay, so this is 3-inch foam that I got from thefoamfactory.com. Uh, it was $120 for stiff 3-inch foam that is queen size. So we're going to open it up and see what it looks like. So I thought this stuff was supposed to be queen size. Uh, so I bought two of them. But, I mean, we did need two, but it's like uh, California king size. It's huge. And uh, even though it's only three inches, you can see how thick it is here. Um, it's good enough to where when I kneel on it, my knees barely touch. So it's going to be good. And as you can see, I got my pads laid out already so I can start cutting. To make a template, all I did was lay out the old seat covers and use a permanent marker to draw around them. Then I started cutting. There is no special technique to this. A lot of people say to use an electric turkey carving knife. Uh, all I had was a bread knife and um, it cut through it pretty quick.
Kid tested, mother approved. One last thing I wanted to show, a uh, pretty affordable project for anybody, is this cover. Um, all I did is I took some uh, really thin PVC pipe. I used a heat gun to heat it up. I put these little pool noodles on the end so that they wouldn't scratch up the paint, which obviously they're moving anyway. Uh, four of them, they go up over the mast uh, and then back down the other side. We get a lot of rain here in Florida. So not only does this keep the rain off, especially on that soft part of the boat right there, um, but also it keeps it from getting dirty because we live underneath banyan trees and this thing gets disgusting.